We're here in the THP Tech Studio with Chris Voschall from Mizuno. Uh, what we have in front of me here is the Shaft Optimizer 3D. Yes. We've actually had some content done with this before. We had a little bit of fun. I had a terrible time remembering it was actually the 3D model. <laughs> so you guys have improved this over time. I remember this back in the day trying to figure out what iron shaft worked. Mm -hmm. uh, but I thought, I don't really see enough conversation out there about what's really going on with this and why it would benefit the everyday golfer to use it. Yeah, and you're totally right. So we've made a lot of improvements from the original shaft optimizer and expanded what it does as well. So with this club, it's got strain gauges, it's got a microprocessor built in, it's got gyros built in, all sorts of stuff on here. So with a couple of swings, we can easily recommend not only your iron shaft, which we've been doing for a while, but we've expanded it now to recommend a driver shaft, set makeup, wedge fitting, even a ball recommendation as well. So all sorts of cool things within that. So we're gonna take a look at some swings and then take a look at the uh, the output mm -hmm. afterwards. Uh, what I really liked about it, since we've been through this before, is there's some stuff that I don't really understand in there and people wouldn't understand, but also uh, references to things we do understand, like mm -hmm. familiar shafts uh, that are available pretty much to everyone. So let's, let's hit some shots and see where we end up. What do you think? Absolutely, let's go for it. Let's do it. All right, Chris, I'm getting ready to set up. We've got some flashing lights here. Yeah, so what this is actually doing is that's going to calibrate this sensor. So what I'm going to do on the software, I'm going to go into iron fitting, and you can see it's going to tell me to begin shaft optimizer. So there's a lot of tools out here that have gyros and stuff like that that measure, but ultimately this is the only one that really calibrates between every single shot to make sure you don't get what we call drift. When you're hitting a lot with gyros, they tend to be each progressive shot gets less and less accurate. So we make sure we dial in every single one because we're measuring not only your swing in 3D, but we're also getting a very precise digital lie angle. So we need to know that dialed in. So All what right. I'm gonna have you do is set up. You see it's flashing blue. I'm gonna hit go here and that light's gonna go red. Okay. So there's once it's red and then once it goes back to blue, then it's gonna be calibrated and now you're ready to go. Let's take a swing. Nice. Always fun to start with a good one. Exactly. <laughs> so that's going to bring over your numbers right here. So we're looking at five different parameters, your head speed, your tempo, your toe down, your kick angle, and your release factor. And I'll talk through, through those in a minute once we hit a couple, bit, couple more. So I'm going to go next. It's going to go red and then blue again. Okay. Nice. So Chris, how many swings does it really take to get this to be accurate enough to spit out some good data? So every one you take is just gonna get that much more accurate. Okay. You know, traditionally when your swing is a lot more consistent, even a high handicapper swing is more consistent than they think in terms of how you load and unload a shaft. Mm -hmm. So even though your impact location might vary, the way you actually fundamentally load and unload is really not changing that much. So we'll show and you'll, you'll be able to see how consistent they were from piece to piece or from shot to shot. And that'll let you give you a good idea of that. Good to go again? Yep. Nice. Do you think we're good after three or should we hit a couple more? I think three is probably good, pretty okay. good number. So I think what we should do now is go to the overview and, and see what exactly is going on. You can walk me through it. Perfect. So now that we've recorded three shots, I'm going to hit finish right here and it's going to take those three shots and it's going to look at what, it's going to start by what type of iron do you want to play? I know you're typically, I know the, the guys want you to play a muscle back, but what do you want to play? Uh, I'm going to leave that in your hands, Chris. What do you okay. think? Okay, I'm going to go with the 921 tour for right now, and then we'll yep. look at set and make up a little bit down the line. So I'm going to select 921 tour, and I'm going to go to the performance fit. That's the more in detailed version. So what this is going to do is it's going to bring your three shots in and take a look at your head speed, your tempo, toe down, kick angle, and release factor. Those are the five parameters we're going to use to really dial in what shaft is going to work best for you. Mm -hmm. Obviously, everyone knows what head speed is. Tempo is on a scale of one to 10 with nine being the fastest and then one being the slowest. Toe down and kick angle all really factor into that release factor, which is how and when you release the club through impact okay. or when the head releases. So the fact that you're a three, that means you're holding on pretty good through impact. Someone who tends to flip it, they're gonna have a higher release factor. That's gonna lend to a softer tip shaft. As opposed to you, you're gonna be in a much firmer tip shaft. Mm -hmm. You got a lot of head speed, mid tempo, and a firm tip shaft. 
So our recommendations right off the bat would be a Project X 6.5, a C-Taper Light X, or a Dynamic Gold X. So all in the heavier weight, weight range because of your head speed and your tempo, and then all with a relatively firm tip from there. So I noticed there's additional there, and, and mm -hmm. I, I'm assuming this is to allow the player to have a bit of freedom if maybe they have a preference or a, a shaft they're familiar with to see kind of where it falls in line. How valuable is it to go really far down that list? Where, where does the diminishing return come in? So really it all depends on the player. The additional shafts are there for a couple of reasons. One, you're exactly right that sometimes the fourth or even fifth shaft might be a really <clears throat> good option as well. But ultimately there's a lot of times when a player will have seen their buddy plays a C taper or something yep. like that. Mm -hmm. And it's almost as important to show how much it doesn't fit you as it is to how much it does. Sure. So with this, what it, what it actually does, is it takes every one of our shaft model options and it gr puts them all on that scale and it shows ranking every one of them. So you can see like for you, the heavyweight stiffs are gonna work, but then when you get down into the, the less um, less recommended, you can see they're mostly lighter weight, softer tip. Okay. So you can see the entire range of shafts. So one of the things I notice is, first of all, there's a bending profile. I'm assuming based on the fact that the colors match up, the top three, that's showcasing what you can anticipate the overall characteristics of the shaft are. That's exactly but there's right. also another element that says selected shaft. Mm -hmm. What would happen in that in that featured box? So what we're doing here is if we're gonna hit like, for example, let's look at the Project X LZ 6.5 as, as another option. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna throw its bending profile on here as well. So you can see where that sits within these. The reason that was most likely not recommended is because it is a softer midsection and a softer butt, which doesn't quite line up with yours. So ultimately, we're going to test all these and see which one works the best. And once we have the selected shaft, we're going to continue on. It takes you to the next step. Now, I know a lot of golfers out there talk about hard stepping, soft stepping. They oftentimes will consider the fact that maybe straight into a shaft is mm -hmm. the best thing. We're all from the internet, of right. course. So <laughs> The conversation ends up there. Does this output any sort of information like that? It will. So the default recommendation on this is going to be what's available in our PFS fitting cart. So when you go into any of our retail locations, all of these recommendations are going to be based strictly off something you can hit there. Because we can't have a soft step and a hard step of everything in the world in there, there's no room, we don't default by showing that. However, what you do have the option to doing is clicking recommendation options and saying all available. What that's going to do is that's going to bring in all the soft step and hard stepped options. So once we do that, you can see your recommendations don't change much. One thing did happen though with the Dynamic Gold X, we actually recommend you hard step that one. Okay. So it did bring in something that you didn't have before and actually says soft step that C Taper X. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. I, I've hit the Project X and it definitely would hate to hard step a 6.5. Right. So, <laughs> you know, that, that is very telling. I don't mean to jump ahead, but I'm very curious when it says continue to length because, yeah, we have this. And actually, if you look at the, mm -hmm. the unit itself, it has minus one, minus a half standard and plus a half inch of length that you can add on to it. Mm -hmm. How does that apply to what we would see from the device? So ultimately what the device is going to do is it's going to put you more in the shaft and the flex. The length is a little bit more at the discretion of the fitter. Okay. So when we continue on to length, what this is going to do is it's going to default you in a standard. Mm -hmm. So we're going to let the fitter go from there. So you've got a couple of options. If a, if a player knows what shaft they typically play, if they play a little bit longer or shorter, you can actually dial that in here. Or if you're not sure, we could put in, for example, your height and your knuckles to the floor and it'll default and give okay. you a recommendation from there. But we really like to leave uh, length to the discretion of the fitter just because there's a lot of personal stuff that goes into that. Okay, and how about lie angle? So lie angle is one of the exciting things about Shop Optimizer 3D because when we go on to here, what it's going to do is it's actually gonna show a digital lie angle. So that's gonna take a measurement of, with this, how much toe down did you have and what was the gyro measurement of angle at impact? I don't know what you typically play, but we recommended you at about three degrees upright. Okay, that's fair. I'm a little bit over the top. Mm -hmm. um, I play to it, play a little pull draw if I can. Yep. And, uh, and being that I'm a little bit taller, over six foot, um, I find myself that typically I need, and because I play stock lengths, mm -hmm. I need a little bit of that upright because my swing automatically is gonna be a bit more upright. Well, and with Mizuno, actually, we're a little bit flatter than yes. standard as well. Yep. So if you look at us across the industry, our starting point of what we call neutral is probably about two degrees flatter than a lot of the industry. Okay. So the fact that we're th recommending three degrees up, we also call out the actual angle. So 64.5 is what we'd say you, you fit into. Okay. 
So from here, there's a couple other things as well. So it's going to take into your head speed, your tempo, all these things and how you deliver and recommend where you split your set as well. So with a set of JPX tours, we actually recommend you go through the five iron and then bring in a four iron of the HMB and a three CLK at 19 degrees. So based off all that information, we've got a recommended set makeup as well. Okay. So when someone sees something like that and they get a little bit excited at the end and say, well, you know, I'm not so sure the JPX 921 uh, tours are what I want. Mm -hmm. Maybe I want to see what the MP20 MBs are. Is, mm -hmm. it, is it easy to go back and change that or is that a whole, a whole is. new process? It is. So you can actually go through, go back to model and let's go to MP. Let's go to MP20, performance fit. It's going to take us through those same things. We've already filled that out, already filled that out, already gone there. And now it'll make those same recommendations within the MP family. Very cool. And the HMB actually sticks it out at it the did. four slot, which is Which great. I would expect because the, the tours and the muscle backs have the same lofts. Okay. So if we had switched to, for example, an MMC, you might have seen something slightly different happen. Very cool. So one of the cool things here, grip, you, got, you can take your measurement of your hand mm -hmm. and put that in for a grip size. But then from here, it's actually got some other options. And these are some of the new things that we have, which is the ball fitting, wedge fitting, and wood fitting. Wow. So one of the cool things, we'll jump right to the wood, just based off of this. What we're going to do here is based off that same swing DNA, have a recommendation for a wood shaft. So we'll, let's just jump right here to the low spin driver, flip here. And based off of your swing DNA, we actually have recommendations for shaft as well. Okay. So we'd recommend you in a CK White 7S in that Tensei model. And again, these are all things you want to hit and test because ultimately a driver is a little bit different than an iron just because ball position can dictate so much in terms of launch characteristics. So we really recommend you test these. So when it comes to a player who's very particular in the weights, I know mm -hmm. that uh, the top three uh, iron shaft models and even the top three uh, shaft models for the driver is actually pursuing a heavier weight. And I'm mm -hmm. assuming it has a lot to do with the DNA. Yep. Now, if a player is more inclined to say, hey, I really want to stick in that 65 gram range. Yep. Is that where you start to slide into the additional shafts and see when the first Absolutely. 65 shows up? So yeah, you can either stroll down through there or we have what we call a fitter's choice option mm -hmm. where you can go within fitter's choice. And if the fitter says, hey, you know, for example, I, you know, I, let's just say, not that you're the guy, but say I have some tendonitis and I want something a little bit softer, I want to err on the weaker side, they can override any of the recommendations with something a little bit softer or a little bit lighter. That's exciting. And, and as you showed before, there's also balls, there's also wedges. Mm -hmm. I, there's another component I didn't actually notice. There's an awful lot that goes on to this. There right? is. Including even just grips alone. It's a great tool for fitters as well as players. Absolutely. And one of the cool things about it is, let's just click straight to the summary. We're going to bring everything in and we're just going to give you all the recommendations that we know of to this point. So even through here, we can say based off of your information, it's more than likely that the uh, RB566V might be a golf ball that could work for you. Mm -hmm. So all of these things are taken into account with all the information that we collected with Shaft Optimizer and trying to recommend as much of the bag as we can. Well, I'll tell you what, it is a lot of information and thank goodness there are fitters out there who are very knowledgeable like yourself on the actual product. Uh, I think anyone out there in the THP universe and beyond those who are watching THP TV would benefit a lot by doing this. Maybe they don't want that all encompassing fitting mm -hmm. that you see that's so popular. This is a great addition to that. Absolutely. And and we truly recommend, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna make the investment in a new set of golf clubs, there's no reason not to gather as much information as possible just to make sure you're benefiting the most from that new technology. Great. Well thanks for your time and uh, again I hope everyone has an opportunity to experience the Mizuno Shaft Optimizer 3D for themselves. Uh, and bring that information back to us in the comment section or on the THP forums. Cool, thank you.